In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at, the, at one of the reactions which occurs in the mains water supplies between chlorine and water. And this helps to kill bacteria which is present in the water so that people don't die of, of, of diseases like cholera. So, first of all, I'm going to write up the equation. So, chlorine gas, so Cl2, which is going to be a gas, reacts with water, so H2O, which is going to be liquid. And this produces, and this is actually a reversible reaction, so I'm going to draw the, 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 the symbol representing a reversible reaction. And this produces HClO, HClO, and it produces HCl, and and yeah, that's what it produces. So these, these two are going to be aqueous, aqueous. Now, if we take a look at the oxidation numbers in this reaction, for chlorine specifically, uh, the oxidation number of chlorine, since it's not combined to any different element, is going to be zero here. And here is combined with hydrogen and oxygen. And so the oxidation number of chlorine is going to be um, plus one. Because the oxygen is going to be two minus. So two minus. And the hydrogen is going to be uh, plus one. So it's a neutral molecule. So chlorine is going to have an oxidation number of plus one. And here it's going to have an oxidation number of minus one. And from these two values, it, it, this, this shows us that it's, first of all, it's been oxidized and its oxidation number has increased. And it's also telling us that it, chlorine has been reduced because its oxidation number has decreased in HCl. And so, therefore, from this, I can tell that this is a disproportionation reaction. Disproportionation. Proportionation reaction since chlorine has been both oxidized and reduced and this reaction here the uh, HCLO uh, which is produced can actually uh, kill bacteria by oxidizing different parts of the, the bacterial cells and one of the other things which HCLO can do I mean yeah one of the other things which HCLO can do is if I draw another reaction, HClO, the HClO can, can then go on to react with H2O. So H2O. And this is going to be aqueous liquid. And then this is also a reversible reaction. And this produces, this produces ClO minus ions. And it produces a hydroxonium ion, so H3O plus. And that's going to be aqueous as well. So all of these are going to be aqueous. Now, the ClO minus which is produced here also can kill bacteria by oxidizing different parts of it. So that can also help to prevent like different outbreaks in the water system. Now, let's take a look at the names of these acids produced. So this here is going to be a chlor uh, uh, chlor chlor chlorate ion, C chlorate ion and it's gonna we need to say the oxidation number of the chlorine so it's gonna be a chlorate I ion so that can um, that can kill the bacteria and this is gonna be a this has two names actually the first name is a uh, chloric acid so th this is basically chloric acid chloric and we need to say that the oxidation number of the chlor of the chlorine in the in this particular uh, compound so chloric I acid and there's another name for it which indicates that it, it, it basically implies that chlorine has the oxidation i mean it has the oxidation number of one so we can also call it hypo hypochlorous acid which which is a, a name that indicates the, the the oxidation number hypo chlorous acid and these are two names which can be used to refer to hclo I hope you guys found this video helpful and in the next video I'll be talking about the scientific impact of these two compounds. So I'll see you guys in the next video.